Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. On today's video, well, I have two CRT monitors on the bench, and something about these monitors kind of annoy me, and it's this. It's a power cord that is fixed to the monitor that I can't remove, and it's just kind of annoying. On the left, we have an Apple RGB monitor, or Apple Color RGB monitor. This is from the Apple 2GS. And on the right, we have the Commodore 1084 P1, P for Philips. This is the Boxy 1084 that I've shown on the channel a million times before. I use this thing all the time. Now, I really don't know why some manufacturers decide that it's okay to have a fixed power cable that sticks out of your monitor and you can't disconnect. I have to imagine that it has something to do with cost savings, penny pinching. I, I just, I don't really know. And it's odd with both of these monitors because they have video cables, well, multiple video cables in the case of the 1084, but in the Apple one, it has just a 15 pin video connector here. So those are removable. It's just the power cords that are fixed. Now, if you're like me and you're annoyed by this phenomenon, what if I told you that there's a way to fix this, but it doesn't work on all the monitors. The Commodore 1084, if I lift this up a little bit, the power cord actually comes out of an opening on the bottom of the monitor, and there's a bit of a strain relief thing there to catch it. And in fact, that broke a long time ago, so I have a washer that kind of holds the power cord in place so it doesn't get pinched when you put the monitor down. Unfortunately, there's really no way to fix this one. Now, the Apple monitor, you'll notice the power cable comes out of a little rectangular piece of plastic, and it has a cable gland on there that holds the cord, keeps it tight so you can't yank it out. And the funny thing is, when you take the monitor apart, you'll notice that where this rectangular piece is actually is designed to hold a standard IEC input jack, just like this one. I stole this off an old dead power supply, and I know for sure if we open up this monitor, we can take this cord out and install this, and then the monitor will have a perfectly fitting IEC mains input power jack. Huge upgrade for me, especially because if I'm moving these monitors around, I don't have this stupid cord floating around where I could trip over it and fall, drop the monitor, you know, all the bad stuff. So I think this is absolutely a worthwhile mod, especially if you have some old dead power supplies, you could just salvage these out of. These are pretty standard across any device that has IEC mains input, power supplies or, or otherwise. So certainly you probably have some dead stuff floating around or things you were gonna recycle anyways. Well, go check it out and you can steal these off of that and then upgrade your monitors. I've gone ahead and moved the 1084 off the bench since there's nothing I can do about that thing. And what we need to do is take the screws off this monitor so we can gain access to what is hidden inside. Now, caveat, before you open up any kind of monitors like this, there are of course dangerous high voltages that can be stored in here and never open one up and work on it with the cable plugged into the wall and it turned on unless you know how to do so safely. Even with the monitor off, of course, the CRT itself is storing a charge and that can give you a, a nice hefty shock. And inside the monitor is a switch mode power supply and that means there are capacitors that can also give you a shock if you uh, touch the bottom while they're still charged up. All right, so for removing the cover on this, looks like I stuck some <laughs> rubber feet on here. They must have been missing. There's normally a little kind of support bar that sits on the bottom edge that allows you to change it around to kind of lift the monitor up and give it a little bit of a pivot. There's also this round disc here, and I don't actually know, I don't know what that is. I'm wondering if Apple had designed maybe a tilt swivel stand or something for this monitor that never was sold or implemented. As far as I'm aware, the Apple 2GS monitor, which is what this one is, never had anything like that. I remember now that the rubber feet that are on the back of this monitor were missing when I got it. And then that little kind of plastic piece that's here was also missing. So I put these, I put these uh, rubber feet on the bottom so it wouldn't slide around, especially when I put it on top of my Apple IIGS. One of the other annoying things about the cord that's fixed like this is taking the top cover off, you have to feed the cable through it, which is mega annoying as well, at least for someone like me who likes to work on their monitors. Now you do have to take the cover off completely to do this work. And on the Apple IIGS monitor, at least, you gotta take these controls off before you slide the cover off. So the way that works is you put the monitor down on your bench, pull it away a little bit, and there's a screw that you take off right here. Like so, and then we can get those controls out relatively easily. If you just pull this away, what'll happen is you could potentially cause some damage. And that's specifically because 
Brightness contrast controls go to the neck board and you don't want to just yank on those arbitrarily. But with that screw out, that just comes free. And now we can turn this and slide it off the rest of the way. And we got to feed the cord through, as I mentioned. Okay, well, with the cover off, now we can get a look at what I was talking about, that the little plastic thing there, well, it looks, <laughs> it looks exactly like the IEC input jack. So this was a design decision on Apple's part that Mitsubishi, who designed this monitor for Apple, had intended to put an IEC jack there. And then for whatever reason, they thought, oh no, oh no, let's put a fixed power cord and annoy Adrian Black in the future for a monitor designed in 1986 or released in 1986. So all we gotta do to swap this over is take out these two screws which I think we will actually reuse. So I actually save the screws when I pull these out of power supplies. There's often like a little nut on the backside and I save those, which so they're on there, but we don't even need those. We're gonna reuse the same exact screws that are on here. So you just get these out. They go into the metal itself. There's a metal structure right there. Now we're gonna have to do some adaptation because the power cord comes through the hole here, is screwed on. There are two ground lugs, and then there is this, which is a connector, and that's where the power connector actually connects to the motherboard. I think what I'm gonna do, because there's probably not enough length, oh, you know, there probably is enough length. I left a little bit of the wires on here. So I think there's enough there that I can just cut this connector right off this cable, which I can do right now. Let me just get some snips. I'm just gonna cut this like that. And that way, all I have to do is really just solder these together and just have a little pigtail basically. And that'll connect up to the board where, where this one was and it will be perfect, nice install. Okay, so we also need to take off these ground connections and this is on the power cord. So it looks like there are two ground connections for whatever reason, I don't know why. Of course, this bolt that's on here that holds that one on is bigger than all the little sockets I happen to have handy. That's annoying. Okay, so with that bolt out, sorry, you probably can't see because I'm covering it. We could slide this out. There is the power cable with that little blanking plate and the cable gland. We don't need that anymore. I think I have enough length here because when this is in place, at least for the hot and the neutral, which is the brown and the blue wire on this one, because that's the international standards. And then black is the hot and white is neutral in the uh, US Canada standards. Okay, so I'm just gonna go sort this out, connect this stuff together, and then uh, we'll do a jump cut. And there's the IEC jack ready for installation. So I just need to remove these fasteners that were from the original power supply or whatever I stole this from. And then this should feed in like so. And I'm gonna use the same fasteners that were in use holding the blank plate in or whatever, that little beige plate. So this just goes in, holds this in place like so. The ground lug from the IEC connector, I put a, a ring connector on it, I had to bend it a little bit. And then I reinstalled that bolt, which has a washer that's sort of, um, I don't know, knurled or whatever. So it really grips it just to make sure that's a good solid connection. And it is. And then this is the new mains connection that goes onto the motherboard. It can only go on one way, just due to the, the way the pins are spaced. And there it is installed. The brown wire is the live, it goes to black. And then the blue wire is sort of the international color scheme for neutral, and that goes to the white wire here in North America. So believe it or not, that's it for this modification. It's actually done. So what I'm gonna do before I put it all back together, I'm just gonna make sure that it does work. So the monitor is currently off. And now I can take a normal mains cord. I can plug this in. There we go. And then I can turn on the monitor. Wow, yeah, it works. The degaussing circuit on this thing makes a big old clonk sound. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's freaking working. How cool is that? So much better than that silly cord that hung out the bottom. Now what needs to happen? Monitor needs to go back together. And it's a lot easier now because I don't have that cord I have to feed through the back cover. 
The Amiga 600 is out because I had this hooked up to the monitor. I was just tweaking a couple settings here and there while I had the back cover off. I've never actually looked inside of this monitor before. It's uh, kind of dusty. Without that annoying cable, it's very easy to get the monitor back together. We just have to get that one single screw out. Where's my screwdriver? Here it is. Oh, I left it out. I always like to put the screw back into the case after I've removed the control panel. I try to do that because it's easy to misplace it. And then you're like, oh, I can't find the screw. So I didn't do it this time though. It's a pretty good design. Uh, getting these controls in is, is relatively easy because there's some alignment pegs. So you can actually put it in place and it stays. And then you can get that one screw in that just makes sure that it, it doesn't fall out. So now you just gently push this back, make sure the wires kind of go into the right position. One issue looking at the back of the monitor, and issue is in air quotes, is that the power connector I installed is black. And obviously if this were Apple, it would have been the beige color that matched the computer itself or the, the case itself. Now it goes without saying that there are, there are other monitors that have the ability to be modified in this way. I have done this mod on other monitors. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which ones they are, but you can usually tell which one it is because when you look at the opening on the back, like I showed you earlier, if it has that shape that looks like an IEC connector, then it's almost certain that you could take the back cover off and install an IEC connector. While the monitor's on its face, I've removed the two rubber feet that I had on this edge, the front edge, and I went and I stole this off another one of my Apple monitors. This is the little, the little stand that goes on here. And there it is. And the reason why I want this on here is because it spreads the weight of the front of the computer onto the case of the Apple II GS. Otherwise it's really pushing on these two little spots right here where I had that. And you can pull this off and you can install this. And now the monitor has a little bit of a lift, but I don't like that. I like it to be in the original, the original position where it's all flush. There we go. Right, there is the Apple II GS monitor, no longer affixed to any cords off the back. So first of all, let me plug in this power cord and I will connect up the Amiga to it. And I have an adapter cable here that goes from the Apple II GS 15 pin connection to the nine pin that the Amiga or the 1084 uses really. That's what I, that's what I ended up doing. And with this cable, which normally I use to actually plug an Apple II GS into a Commodore 1084, it works in reverse. So I can just plug this into the Amiga 1084 video cable, power on the monitor. We should get, we should get whatever the Amiga is displaying, which was the Amiga test kit. Yes, it is. So there's a test pattern. It's funny that I like to hook an Amiga up with the test kit and this test pattern for calibrating monitors, at least for the drive controls and the bias controls and the brightness and the contrast, because you can tell exactly if you have your screen or your brightness too high or too low based on what you're seeing there. And then you can adjust the contrast and the drive controls and stuff like that. But that is not what this video is about. What this video is about is that now I could just pull these cables off the back, lift this up. And as you can see, we're no longer encumbered by this annoying cable that, well, you know, was on the monitor for its entire life. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna throw this cable away. Obviously it could be used on something else, but the reason why I like this cable is that it's actually very flexible. And the power cord that's on my Commodore 1084 is not. That cord is really stiff and annoying, but this gray Apple cable is just, I don't know, feels nicer. So I'm gonna reuse this and install it onto the Commodore 1084 because that will be a big improvement for the crap cable that's on there that I cannot remove. And I don't think I'm gonna install this cable in this video because there's really nothing to that. You just open the monitor and swap the cable over just like I did here. The cool thing about this mod is that we can just use a regular IEC jack. I'm just trying to get this cable gland off. I'm using the special tool that a viewer sent me. Thank you very much for that. That makes this job so much easier. And with the appropriate tool, I was able to get that cable gland off and it's still in good shape so I can save that and reuse it. And the power cord, well, it's got a little crimp in there, but that's no problem. And this should be a relatively easy mod to install into the 1084. And then I'll have a much less annoying, but still annoying, just less annoying power cord on that monitor. 
So there we go. That is the whole video. It's a short one. It's a very short one. I just wanted to show that it's pretty easy to modify these monitors often to add the IEC jack and just get rid of that stupid cable. I think at least some of the other Apple monitors that have a fixed power cord can accept this mod, although I can't remember. But just look at the monitor. Just look for the opening that is the right size for an IEC jack and just know that there's a good chance that a regular IEC jack that you steal off an old recycled power supply can totally make the monitor that much better. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Names are scrolling up the side of the screen that make it possible I do this full time. They are my patrons. They are my YouTube members and they are awesome people. Thank you very much to all those folks. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you haven't already. All the usual YouTube junk. And that's going to be that. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.